YouTube has decided to simplify ad controls on videos, which is a fun and positive way to say, take ad controls away from creators. But it's also complicated. Don't think too hard, you might get a brain owie. I can't put a bandage up there. I'm James Shrive, this is TechLinked, and this is the YouTube support page explaining that starting now, new uploads will only be able to toggle ads on or off, rather than where they show up and whether they're skippable and or unskippable. Mid-roll ads are unchanged, except that manually placed and automatic mid-rolls can both be enabled now before they are mutually exclusive. We live in the best timeline. YouTube is also changing the TV watching experience for people who miss that pre-TiVo era. When watching longer form content on a television, all the ads will be grouped together. It seems like Google intends for these changes to lead to more ads served to viewers and therefore more revenue to Google but it may just lead people to get up and go to the bathroom or the microwave when the commercials start, just like the good old days. But Google's trying to get more cash on another front as well. No, not their Chrome visual redesign, that won't help. No, it's the privacy sandbox for the web feature. It allows websites to send targeted ads based on your browser history, now that third-party cookies are harder to come by. Although Chrome isn't following Safari's lead and disabling those just yet, Chromies will now see a misleading pop-up that does a poor job of explaining that you can actually opt out of browser tracking in that it doesn't explain it at all. Some users, most likely in regions with stronger privacy laws, are informed they have a choice because Google understands consent about as well as a frat house in an 80s movie. Valve has just received radio certification in South Korea for a mysterious new device, as uncovered by a user of Elon's favorite website slash letter. We can't be quite sure what the device is because the description isn't unique. It's actually identical to those for the Quest 3 and Steam Deck, though it could be a new VR headset. According to popular rumors, Valve has been testing a standalone VR headset codenamed Deckard that's meant to compete with Quest headsets, and it would make sense that this would be their next device. Back in 2021, Valve product designer Greg Coomer Rough name. <laughs> was elated to be asked if the Steam Deck's custom APU would be used in a standalone headset and said, it would run very well in that environment. Gaming god Gabe Newell was quoted the next year saying the Steam Deck is a stepping stone to standalone VR. Near the end of that same year, Coomer, I love it, revealed to Korean publication This Is Game that Valve is continuing to develop VR headsets recently. So you might as well just give away your Valve Index at this point to clear up space on your desk. Maybe send it to your favorite tech news show writer named Jacob or something. Hey, just a thought. Speaking of leaks, a bunch of information has come out concerning Meta's plans for its Quest headsets. Meta needs to win back consumers after Apple started edging into their turf. Gross. With the Vision Pro by apparently making the upcoming Quest 3's accessories, like this leaked head strap and consequently some audio accessories, incompatible with the Quest 2. But if expensive accessories that make the Quest 3 less of an affordable alternative to the Vision Pro aren't enough to entice buyers, Meta may also have reversed its plans to discontinue the MetaQuest Pro line. A report from South Korean outlet Mail Business Newspaper claims Meta has partnered with LG, who will build various parts for a high-end headset, rumored to be named not the MetaQuest Pro 2, but the MetaQuest 4 Pro. That would seem to indicate it's less like a second gen Quest Pro and more like an upgraded Quest non-Pro. Whatever it is, it'll reportedly launch in 2025, by which point the VR hype that Apple has revived may have died again. So frankly, I wouldn't worry about it. Now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by Delete Me, the company that puts personal back in personal data. Now more than ever, private information is being easily shared and sold online without consent. And even worse, they don't even give you a cut of the profits. <coughs> With a simple Google search, you can find hundreds of online profiles sharing your personal info, leading to annoying robocalls, scam emails, and a higher risk of identity theft. Delete Me's team of experts, combined with their software special sauce, can opt you out from people search websites, which are like Google, but for stalkers. Instead of wasting hours of your time figuring out how to remove your data, spend a few minutes signing up for Delete Me and they'll do it for you. They'll even send you regular personalized privacy reports showing what info they found, where they found it, and what they removed so you don't have to feel like looking over your shoulder all the time. It's bad for your neck! Want to disappear from web search results? Go to joindeleteme.com slash techlinked and use code techlinked for 20% off today. Quick Pits only reach their true power when you watch them at-
Don't do it. Two massive vulnerabilities allowing iOS devices to be infected with malware by opening attachments in iMessage were discovered by researchers at the University of Toronto's Citizen Lab. It's Citizen Lab! According to them, the bugs had already been used to plant spyware on an iPhone belonging to a Washington DC based civil society organization. Fortunately, a security patch has already been released, so update your iPhone before someone else hacks in there and finds that slash fiction you wrote about Riley and me. Let's be honest, it's not your best work. Tasteful nudity though. Microsoft is partnering with startup Heirloom in a devious plot to steal all the world's precious carbon dioxide with up to 315,000 anti-American metric tons of CO2 captured over the next decade. Heirloom will be building two new carbon capture facilities in the United States, but they've already been collecting carbon on Microsoft's behalf through a partner facility in Iceland. After greenhouse gases are kidnapped from the atmosphere, they'll be bound to limestone and held in underground wells. The purpose of this global conspiracy? Perhaps we'll never know. A Japanese rocket meant to blast off last month finally launched after weather delays. In addition to delivering a space telescope into low Earth orbit, the rocket successfully sent a small rover on its way to moon. On its way to moon. We're getting rid of the the. Meanwhile, NASA admitted their SLS mega rocket program meant to send humans to moon is unaffordable. Great, now inflation's so bad even astronauts are going to be replaced by robots. You can't afford to live on moon. <laughs> the craters are getting tinier every year. Nintendo has teamed up with Google to make a VR headset, more VR, at least according to leaker and Tatooine moisture farmer, Nash Weedle. Weedle, <laughs> is that based just on the name or the look too? Just the name. Okay, Nash Weedle. <laughs> Weedle, who in fairness, I'm crying, did actually predict Metroid Dread's release a year before the game's launch, claims he's not entirely sure how Google is involved, but it might involve a subsidiary, a subsidiary, a subsidiary that makes micro LED displays. There's no ironclad proof that this is true, but earlier this year, a Redditor found a VR related patent filed by Nintendo. I'll finally be able to live my ultimate fantasy of stepping into the shoes of an overweight, shroom-addicted Italian plumber. It's me, Mario. And Toyota has provided more information on the unexpected shutdown of all 28 assembly lines at all 14 of their Japanese auto plants caused by a computer error in late August. That computer error? Insufficient disk space following system maintenance. The plants had backup servers. Unfortunately, those backups were running on the same system as the main server and ran into the exact same error. There was some speculation that Toyota may have been hacked, but no, they just needed to uninstall some Steam games. Baldur's Gate 3 or Starfield, guys, you can't have both. And you can't avoid coming back on Monday after you've been playing either Baldur's Gate or Starfield for 45 hours. But there's gonna be more tech news. It never stops. It just keeps going. I'm so tired.